Hi, and welcome to Chapter 3 Excel. So in this Excel video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the S&P 500. Both of these are from Chapter 3 of the Investment Textbook you've been studying. Now, the question is, how do you calculate the Dow Jones Industrial Average? So here I have, think of this as Example 1. So I'm going to go down here, and let me put a nice thick box around it, so we know that's Example 1. And this is example two. Okay, so we have basically the Dow Jones Industrial Average has 30 companies. So I've listed the 30 companies here. And the first step, here's the formula. It's just the sum of the closing share prices divided by the Dow Jones Industrial Average Current Divisor. So here is um, the stock prices of all these companies. So we just do a quick auto sum of those prices. We have the divisor and we take the total of all of these stocks, current prices and divide by the divisor. And this is how the Dow Jones industrial average is calculated. So say in this column here, this is basically what if all the prices went up 10%. So for every company in the Dow Jones industrial average, if it went up 10%, we do the same thing. We'd find the sum and then we divide by the divisor. Now the divisor is something you don't have to calculate. This is uh, calculated by the Dow Jones company. So they have a particular formula of how you know they calculate the divisor. And it's it's adjusted when you have new stocks added, the stocks taken away, they adjust the divisor to try to keep the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, from changing when a new stock is added or taken away. And that's, uh, will, the divisor will slightly adjust to compensate for that. But that's as simple as it is to calculate the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Now why this isn't a great average to look at is because, now all these stocks went up 10%, right? So if you if you were to take the Dow Jones here, and we'll just do a quick, calculate a quick change. And you should see that if all the stocks go up 10%, then <clears throat> indeed the Dow Jones Industrial Average increases by 10%. So take a stock like Walgreens. What if this goes <clears throat> from, we'll add $50 to this. So watch the, we have 36,380 here. Now we have 36,709, okay? What if we do that to another stock here? So we add 50 here. Forgot what the original is, 180, okay. So we see that it goes up by the same amount. We got to 709 again. So any $50 anywhere is gonna raise this the same amount. Now, this is why it doesn't work so well. So what if this particular stock, uh, the Dow, let's see, American Express, what if there was 1 billion shares outstanding? So 1 billion shares outstanding for American Express. And American Express went up um, $50. So if the American Express went up $50, we get that 36,709. But how much money was actually created here? So if we take the outstanding shares times the $50, we got $50 billion worth of new, new money being, new wealth being created by when American Express goes up $50. Bring it back down. Now, what if American Express, uh, let's say, what if a different company, Walgreens here, and they actually had not 1 billion, but they had <clears throat> 10 billion shares outstanding. So if they had 10 billion shares outstanding and they went up $50, we're talking about 500. Instead of um, 
50 billion being created new wealth, $500 billion of new wealth being created. But if this goes up to extra $100, we get the same result of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, the, so this is why it's not a great measure because if, if one stock has more outstanding shares and the price goes up on that stock, it creates more wealth, but it doesn't necessarily move the Dow Jones Industrial Average proportionally. So this could make the returns in this average a little unbalanced because we're only looking at share price. We're not reflecting any, any um, the number of outstanding shares because the outstanding shares is what generates the total value that's being of wealth being created or destroyed. So that's why they say the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the way it's calculated, is not the best representation of how the stock market grows. Now the S&P 500 being an index here, not an average has a different formula. So here's the formula. And let me just reformat this a little bit so it's more readable. Okay, so the S&P 500 is the sum of the current market value divided by the base sum of the market value then times 10. So I'm going to do a little trick here when I calculate this. So I have all these, here's the stock symbols. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go to data stocks. And I'm going to uh, input this by clicking this button, it's going to update. So now we have, if I make this window a little bit bigger, now we have the company name and the stock symbol and the exchange. And this has all been real time brought in from the Excel stocks. Now I'm going to go here and click show me, I'll do the 52 week low and that would be populated under the base price. Then I'm going to do the 52 week high of those stocks. And then I'm going to click on and do outstanding shares. Okay. So now I was able to quickly and using Excel, the magic, magic of Excel, because I had the stock symbol, I was able to input the real time information directly in my spreadsheet. So that's pretty cool, right? <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate the base price. Um, oh, I actually don't need to know the, the total base price. What I want to know is the, the market base price value. So that's going to be the base price times the current price. And then the, oh, no, I'm sorry. The base price times the current outstanding shares. And let's just bring this down to, let's highlight this to currency. Okay. Now the market current market value is going to be the current price <clears throat> times these shares. So what I what I did here is, and these are in dollar terms. So what I did here is I looked at for the S and P five hundred. I pulled in as the base price the fifty two week low, and as the current price the fifty two week high. So it's basically saying for the year. <clears throat> it's basically saying for the year. Let's compare. The base price is the lowest price of, of these stocks for the year, and the current price is the highest price for the stocks of these years. To see what the actual um, calculate the S&P 500 index based on this pair of base and current price. Now, in reality, the base price would be the price of which the stock w was at, when it entered the S&P 500, and the current price would be whatever the current stock price is. And these are the current outstanding shares. So... Here we have the base market value and the current market value. So I'm going to use the quick fill by double clicking uh, when this cursor turns from a white plus to a black plus, I double click and I fast fill. And if you see, if you page down, you'll see I'll have all 500 stocks, the S&P 500 are in here. And I'm going to double click the column to get rid of these hashtags. All right, so let's go up. So I'm going to find, I need to find the, 
I want to sum this field here. I'm not sure why it says that. And again, that field error is because one of the fields here didn't have a value in it. So I'm going to hit this quick sum and I'm going to highlight the column and I get the total value of the base. Yeah, and then I'm going to do, I could do the same thing here. I could cop, I could either copy this over like that, or I could just do the same exact highlight the range. Either way, it's going to work out to be the same number here. Okay. So here's the base value of the S and P 500 at the low of each of the stock prices and the base value at, at the current market value at the high. So the S and P 500, if I follow this formula here, I'm going to take the sum of the current market value. I'm going to divide that into the sum of the base market value. And then I'm going to multiply it by 10. Why do I multiply it by 10? That's the formula. <laughs> so that would give a S and P index value of 19. Now, why is this so low? Well, it's because we just, the base price here is so low. If I was to change the base price here to something a little bit more realistic, um, to when the, the stock was first added to the, to the S&P 500, I'd have a much larger number here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust these and we'll see what that brings. So I adjusted the base price, uh, which is the stock price. At the time, the S&P 500, this, this stock entered the S&P 500. So many of these companies, they entered the S&P 500. Some of these could be uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 years ago. So if we adjust the base price for stock splits and the stock price when it was originally added, we could get a more realistic base price here compared to the current value. And then we'd get an S&P 500 index that would be a lot higher here at uh, 3811, which isn't too far off from what, where the S&P 500 is today. Okay, and that's how you would calculate the S&P 500. Okay, so there you go. So there is the realistic way. And you can see that the S&P 500 is a better measure of the market change because if, um, if a stock that has a billion shares outstanding, if this stock goes up, say we're gonna move this up, we're gonna add $5 to this. Well, we'll do 50, okay. So what if this stock went up $50 to so 178.54? Let's see how it changes the index. Okay, so we have, let's just put that 3819.73 here and I'll reverse that. Okay, so we went actually from 3811 to 3819. So that is about eight points higher. So we'll just keep that number and we'll bring this back Bring this back. So this, so if this stock goes up fifty dollars, it creates an eight point increase. Well, what if this stock goes up fifty dollars to one nineteen fifty nine? So we go from thirty eight eleven to only thirty eight twelve. So why this stock went up fifty dollars a share? Like this stock went up fifty dollars a share, but because there's less outstanding shares, the actual change in the index is much less. And that's why this is the index is a more realistic valuation of the stock market because it measures the true um, current market value because it's looking at shares and stock prices, not just stock prices like the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, and that's why the S&P 500 is considered to be a more realistic measure of where the stock market is. Now, what makes the Dow just Industrial Average kind of work is that the companies here are all large and they all tend to have... Um, you know, a similar amount of outstanding, outstanding shares and the stock price is not too far off. So <clears throat> it's not as distorted as, as you might think because the stocks are so similar, but still it's not going to be as accurate as the S&P 500. Okay. So I hope you, uh, you enjoyed this tutorial on the chapter three Excel. Talk to you next time.